Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Live Charting, the show where you pick the tickers, we chart them out for you. My name is Jason Kretzky. I'm going to be your host, and we are so lucky tonight to be joined by the illustrious Miss Sarah the Strat Sniper. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on, Sarah. I love having you on. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing amazing. I'm always happy to do Trend Spider events. I love you guys. Um, awesome. Before we even get into anything, though, I did want to tell all of FinTwit, thank you so much for all the well wishes and prayers for my mom. Some of you may know, may not know. She had a heart attack nine days ago, had open heart surgery, and she is coming home today. So I just wanted to share that with you guys and tell you how much we appreciated that. So it's good news. Awesome. Yeah, we were all rooting for her. I'm so glad to hear that she's doing good. That's great. Yeah, doing good. And I'll be visiting her next week. Awesome. Well, right on. You want to jump right into this thing? Everybody knows who you are. No need for introductions. Where are we at in the markets? We had a crazy day today. The monthly candle closed yesterday. What are you seeing? What are you expecting? What should we do? <laughs> <laughs> so good question. So yeah, today, today was a good day. Uh, we were all expecting, well, there's, there was only one of, well, there's two things that could happen this month. There's really only two things, two possibilities. One would be we stay below August is low, and then we come down and we test these lows. The other thing would be we, we stay above August lows and we become an outside month of August. So those are really the only two things that can happen because we already broke uh, August is low. And then today, you can't really see it on SPY. It, it looks close. SPY did not quite take out this pivot low, but ES, so the futures did, yeah, yeah. which is why SPY bounced where it did. And also NQ did. Um, RTY did not. It's lagging a little bit. So tomorrow, we're kind of going to take it easy. Well, there's only one day left in the week. It's non-farm payroll Friday. Also, we're heading into a holiday week. So we kind of want to pump the brakes. Um, and we're, we really just have to play it by ear. So tomorrow, we're expecting continuation up. Um, but that could just be corrective activity. We, we have a whole month of price action to get through. So we really need to see if we stay below August low or if we stay above it, because that's going to determine our time frame continuity and which way we want to be playing, because we always want to be playing with time frame continuity, meaning what color is the candle? Is it green or red? It can be as simple as that. And you want to play in the direction that it's going. So we just kind of have to see, like I said, we're going to take it easy tomorrow. We really need some corrective activity on the daily because we've just been straight down for what, five days now yeah, with no like relief bounce or anything. So going to see what tomorrow looks like. We could go two up and then start failing and go three, not, not so aggressive as this one, but we could definitely do that tomorrow too. So if you're a newer trader, um, non-farm payroll Fridays are not a great day for you to trade. It's going to be real volatile when that comes out. So can you walk me through exactly why it's only the one of those two circumstances? It's either we stay below August low and we seek lows from May or June, or we stay above August low and we seek August high. Why is that? Well, because there's only three, as you know, three candle types per the strat. There's an inside bar, a directional bar, or an outside bar. So we're not going to be an inside bar. That's already off the table because we already broke August's low. So we're not going to stay inside. Right. Um, we it's could. That's all we can do. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to go all the way up and test August as high either. I mean, we could stop somewhere in the middle. It just depends. Um, next month's going to be a big month too because we're going to start the new quarter. And right now we're trading as an inside quarter. Um, 
what is it? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, March. I'm trying to. July, uh, August, September would be a quarter, right? Yeah. June. So that's last quarter, those three candles. Right. So we're currently an inside With, quarter. So right. this is this is the range. So maybe this is too big of a range for us to come and take up take August as highs. We're just gonna have to see. Um, but we're gonna do what we always do and we're gonna we're just gonna play the price action. We're not gonna try and predict anything. Yeah, how do you gauge expectation for continuation up to let's say August, the August high? How do you know, how do you get the confidence? Like, yeah, I actually think we're going to get there. What do you need to see price action do to have that? Belief? Well, the reason the, the reason I'm actually a little bit unsure if we're going to get all the way back up to August is high is because you know that we love broadening formations, and the reason that we pulled back was because we hit a new pivot high, right. and then we also had the low here. So if you look at where we are in this broadening formation we're, we're dead smack in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things. Your confidence isn't as high when you're stuck in the middle of a broadening formation. And what I mean by a broadening formation is you have a low. So this pivot low, a high, a new low, a new high. And we, we started coming back down as if we're going to make a new low, but this candle, as you can see, is hammering up right now. So this is kind of the indecision zone where we're not 100% confident like we sometimes are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're in the middle. So if we go back up, that would be the outside month. If we go back down, that would be us staying below the August monthly candle and taking out the lows. So we just have to see because we're stuck right here in the center. Got it. Okay, right on. Well, that gives us a good base of where we are. Um, if you're new to the show, the way that we do the voting is you can vote for three tickers per round. Um, one round is one ticker. So you do have to pick three unique tickers if we don't chart the tickers that you request in the first round, keep on picking them and hopefully we'll get to them. We're going to try to get to as many as we can. And then last piece here, before we get started, we do have a crazy deal tonight. Sarah's, uh, Sarah's deal, 55% off any plan of your choice and a 14 day trial. So if you have been sitting on the sidelines thinking about getting a transpider account and you're watching this show, if you don't take advantage of this deal, I don't know what deal you're going to take advantage of because this is about as good as it's going to get. 55% off, 14-day trial. We just released multi-symbol view for all of those folks who are into that. We've got some other tricks up our sleeves that are coming here very soon too. Um, so maybe you guys have found that stuff on the platform. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into this thing, right? Um, the first ticker that has been requested is Amazon. Oh, it just didn't fill that gap, did it? It just didn't fill that gap. Just didn't fill that gap on the daily. Um, so Amazon is basically in the exact same boat as SPY, QQQ, the whole market. Um, and kind of your line in the sand is going to be August is low. So if you're above 126.77, you're going to want to play it to the long side um anticipating that outside month for September meaning we take out the low of August and then we also come and take out the high okay and if you stay below it you're going to want to stay short that's it's pretty i mean it's it can be as simple and clear cut as that um it should do what the market does tomorrow so you're probably going to get a two up um i don't think it left a gap. No, up there. Yeah. So just use this level, this 126.77 is your line in the sand. Long above, short below. Simple. Got it. 
Should traders be concerned at all about the fact that they left a little gap there? I would. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not comfortable. It's not a great big gap, but I wouldn't, I would have wanted it to get filled. Yeah. But they don't always get filled when we want them to. No, so. they don't. They, they do like to leave little pieces of meat on the bone for another day. <laughs> Yeah. It's always nice when they do. What is that? Like 80 something cents. Yeah. Like why did why couldn't you just do it? Like Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Know. So that well, maybe so that they can do it later. Yeah. That, that probably is exactly why. Right. Okay, cool. Amazon. Uh next one is Roblox. The whole market's the same. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, Every except for day, maybe ener energy. Energy might look a little bit different. Yeah, we can look at that. Everything's kind of the same. And Roblox also hit the top of its broadening formation up here, meaning it made a new high compared to these highs, hence the pullback. But right. we did just make a new low compared to a previous weekly pivot low. So this mm -hmm. could be a little baby broadening formation where you've got this high and this high, and then you just put in a new low. So just like the market, if you stay above 37.79, you're gonna anticipate coming back up into here. Little inverse head and shoulders too. They came back and tested the low that was lost back in March. Back the low that was lost and then it was oh. regained too. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Here, yeah. here, uh, here. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep. So same thing. That's your line in the sand. Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, somebody had asked, let me see. What did they say? I just saw it. They said uh the time frames that your charts far. Far right? Yes. Far right? I saw it somewhere. What time frame is the chart on the far right? It's the daily. You've got the daily, monthly, we weekly's in the middle, monthly on the left. Yeah. So it's left to right, monthly, weekly, daily. Um, it says session at the top. Same as because, daily. Yeah. I asked Dan about it and he basically said that, because sometimes you'll get those weird phantom wicks, but they'll show up on the daily chart. But if you use the session, they're building the 30 minute candles, I think. So it's more yep. accurate and you don't get those pre-market weird wicks. So I find that the session is more accurate. Mm, interesting. So that's what I use. Good to know. All right, let's keep on moving. NVIDIA. That, that, this is at a very interesting point. It looks like it's exhausted because I actually thought it might go outside month last month, but we ran out of day. It, it took one more day to go outside month, which was to take out 140.55. Might be hard to see over here, but we did that today. And then we also took out that pivot low. So if the market starts to reverse and go up and stay green, I think that NVIDIA is in a good place um, to come back up and maybe test the top of these highs. Because also these are like relative equal highs, which I've started learning ICT, which really ties in well with the strat. Yep. Um, because our goal is always to make a higher high. And that's kind of like the ICT concept of grabbing liquidity and then coming back down. Um, exactly so, what they did today, but on, in the reverse, right? Correct. They yeah. just barely swooped underneath the lows, like yes. you said on 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 uh, futures at least. Yes. They just barely cut underneath the lows, took out all the stops there, and then ramped it. Yes. Then that's how price action works. Like your lows will almost always get taken out. So trying to bottom fish above pivot lows. You're going to get wrecked almost every time. You want to wait for the break and then try and go long. You don't want to go long before the lows get taken out. 
right. Learned that lesson the hard way this morning, unfortunately. <laughs> well, well, now it you happens. know it. It happens. Well, I knew it. I knew it. But you know, you get excited, you get confident, you start going, ah, I'll be all right. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're not all right anymore. Yeah. The lows got taken out, huh? They yeah, sure did. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Tesla. What name were you playing, Jason? Oh, um, I was playing uh, ES futures, but MES oh. micros. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tesla, same as the market. But if we do break below August is low, you'll, I already had these on the chart because what was happening here was exactly the same as what was happening here. I mean, this really isn't strat talk, but if you like look at the monthly, you'll see that it's a very clear downtrend of lower highs and lower lows. So if the market can't stay above August is lows and starts trading below August is lows, you can expect the same thing that happened here, taking out that pivot low to also happen here and take out these pivot lows. So do you, again, do you, sorry, sorry. No, you're good. But again, that's your line in the sand. So bullish above 271 and bearish below it. And if you're just like everything else, if you're above it, you're going to target that pivot high. If you're below it, you're going to start targeting the lows below. And you've got relative equal lows down here, right. whatever this level is. So that, that brings us to my question, which was, you've got relative equal lows down there. That area, that 208 to 215, it's been tested three times. If you find yourself back there, do you think that the odds are in the favor of price just taking out all of those lows and going for, yes, that? Because yeah, in definitely. a longer term, you know, shorter term, yeah, you're in an uptrend or you're in a downtrend since July or so of last year. But in the longer term, you're making higher lows technically. Like you've you've made higher lows in, in comparison to those January 2021 lows. True. But we did sweep below the February 22 lows. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, um, yeah, if these get taken out, these will definitely be next. There, it's it's just the chart is setting it up for it. You've got a uh, triple relative equal lows right here. So price is eventually going to want to come and grab that. Yep. Not to say it's going to keep going once it grabs that. It's going to come grab it and then probably go back up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they're going to they're safe here, like in the long term, but they won't be. Right. They end up cutting just underneath those lows and then turning it back and sending it all the way back to the top where exactly. they came from. Exactly. It's tricky. It's, it's it, price action trading is so tricky in that way. Cause it's like the, when it feels like the worst time to be buying is probably the best time to be buying. And the worst time to be selling is like the best time to be selling. <laughs> Well, that's exactly right. And that's why trading is so hard because it's counterintuitive. You know, you're supposed to buy the fear, which you're scared to death to do because you're like, is this the right time? And then you're supposed to sell the greed. And then you're like, well, why would I do that? I'm winning. But that's exactly right. And Tesla gave you the perfect telltale this week when you came and made a new high and then ended the week as a shooter. Like- yeah. That's the top of a broadening formation right here, a slight higher high. That's your target. So the strat entry was a break above this candle's high, targeting that candle's high. It did that. That is your target. That's your exit. That means yep. get out of your longs, maybe flip short if you get a daily reversal, which you did. And then when we went two down on the week, it was over. Yep. So got it. All right, let's keep moving. Wheat, W E A T. I don't ever look at that as a future. Maybe I should. 
Oh, maybe it's not what I think it is. Yeah, I know it is. I know there's wheat futures. I just really haven't looked into it. Yeah, I don't know. That's outside of my pay grade. ES and NQ and RTY is enough. It it really is. You've got a nice little broadening formation. It looks like it wants lower. So it looks like it wants to come and take out that 763 because it took out that pivot high on the weekly. So that would have been your long target. Well, long target one, long target two. It did not hit long target two, started reversing. Um, you're actually at risk. Eh, we only have one day left in the week. I'm not going to say it's going to be an outside week. That's too much to go in one day. But next week, if you break below this week's low, like pretend we close the week at 813, you're going to target this, which is like 784 and then 763. Got it. A couple quick questions for you from viewers. Do you normally have extended hours turned on or off when you're charting date? I never I have it on. I don't never have it on. Mm -mm. I don't pay attention to pre-market at all. Why is that? Um, because I don't care about it because it doesn't show up on the real daily charts and stuff like that. And I just don't need it. Also, um, we like our candles to update at the bottom of the hour. And if you have extended hours on, they update at the top of the hour, which in the beginning of the day, I wish the market was open from nine to three and yeah. not like 8.30 to three. Well, that's yeah. my time. I'm central. I wish it was open an even amount of hours, not like six and a half. Um, so that's another reason why. And then, you know, the volume's just low and I don't know. It Have you really... considered ever using 65 minute candles? Um, I don't, but I know a lot of people do in the strat because it yeah. cuts even, what is it? Seven, right. five, uh, six candles, I, I guess it would yeah, be. Yeah, I think it's six. Yeah, it would be six. No. But no, not for you. Okay, right on. Oh. And uh, another question. Real quick, I know the answer to this, but you have no indicators on your chart. Right. Just price action. That's it. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're thinking about swing trading or day trading, scalping, only price action levels. That's it. Right. Okay, cool. Let's keep moving. Apple. Same. Same, same. Line in the sand is August is low. The whole, like, there's not a lot to say. Like the whole, <laughs> I mean, we have a new month, but the new month is not red. So if it's going to be red, that's what we're going to want to know about. And one more, one more very brief explanation about why August is very important here. We had, we have a couple questions about it. Why is the August low the, the one that's so important? Well, because you have um, a shooter on the monthly. So by definition, that's bearish if it can stay below it. And that's basically the, the whole logic. So if you can stay below it, you're bearish. If, if not, then the bears are failing and then you want to play the other side. Right. Okay, cool. Keep it on moving. You, 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 you. chart i've charted it before and the drawing still stands it does doesn't it <laughs> yeah um you're in the middle of a broadening formation uh what do we what happened on the daily um three two continuation up i mean the, they're selling this one on the monthly. So it almost looks like they're going to want to take it back down just based on time frame continuity. 
I wonder why this is an energy. Uranium, I believe. Uranium? I could be wrong about that, but I thought I it was know. uranium. It says, it says energy fuels ink. Mm -hmm. Does this look like XLE? No. See if it looks like URA. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, this is kind of a hard one because you have this near term broadening formation where price goes high, low, new high, new low. It's it might be trying to make a new high, but then longer term, it's in this very tightening range where you've got, you know, lower highs and higher lows. So it's right. just kind of just kind of chopping around in this medium median area of like seven bucks seems to be like the mean reversion level for this ticker. So you think it'd be best if, if you're on the sidelines thinking about trading this to let it, let it further develop and take a play maybe once it extends in one, once it chooses a direction breaks out of that kind of wedging that it's in yeah, right now. That's going to be probably like a it long be, time. Yeah, it could be months. Yeah, yeah, a long time from now. You could potentially um, do like a fly, like sell sell out of the money calls and out of the money puts. And oh, the, like a spread? Yeah, play the spread. Yeah, yeah. If you want to bet on it, just kind of chilling in that range. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's doing. It. It tried to go up and then, you know, the whole market kind of rallied today, but uranium did not. Mm -mm. So, mm. but what was everybody talking about? Like on Monday and Tuesday, they were talking about uranium. All anybody who was trading breakout, you know, that kind of style, that's where all of the eyes were, was on uranium early in the I week. I didn't hear anything about uranium earlier in the week. So not, a, it's not a huge surprise to see it failing when, if, if the bid is coming back to the queues and spy and all that stuff. Because of this one day people were talking about it. Mm -hmm. It was a big day. CCJ was another that, uh, that a lot uh, of folks were mentioning. Huh? No, I don't really mess with uranium. We'll play energy and oil and stuff, but uranium, not so much. Yeah. Got it. Okay, cool. So we're kind of chilling. We're, we're, we're not super, super interested in trade on uranium here. No, not really. All right, sweet. Well, it's at the, I believe we're at, the, yeah, we're at the halfway point now. So if you're just tuning in or if you tuned in after the intros, we're hanging out with Sarah Strat Sniper. Uh, she is giving us her view on what's going on across the markets. Um, we have a very special deal. It's only available for the next 30 minutes. It's uh, the 55% off any plan of your choice. And you're getting a 14 day trial. So if you guys are interested, if you're thinking about becoming a TrendSpider user, you're not one yet, you've been waiting for an offer, a good deal, there isn't going to be a better deal than this for a while. So take advantage of it if you're interested in it. Um, let's get back to the charts. We're going to go to Qualcomm next. I just read a really funny comment on Twitter. <laughs> what they say? They said, is Jason your dude? Ha! Huh. Bro, I'm no, I don't even live in the same state. Jason's I'm a married, my friend. I'm a married man. Yeah, he is. But we're homies. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, let's see. Call, ugh. Looks... Looks lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> what the hell happened to it? It was doing well a while ago. It got Jeez. rocked. It probably, they make semiconductors, right? Is this a, are they a semiconductor company? Um, I don't know. I know they're in the, the tech. They're in this, I feel like they're in the same basket as NVIDIA and AMD. And if that's the case, there was news the other day about exports, something about limiting exports. And so all the semis got hit. It was like on Wednesday, maybe after hours, or maybe it was Thursday after. I can't remember. No, it, was, it, is, it is Thursday after hours right now. So it was either Tuesday, either Tuesday or Wednesday. 
All right. Well, this looks like a lot weaker than the, the market is. The market's only about halfway through its weekly broadening formation. Uh, Qualcomm's a lot lower to the lows. So what I would want to see would basically be in non-strat terms, a bear flag, and then continuation down and take out these relative equal lows over here. So I would be uh, short biased this name, but after corrective activity. Yeah, it seems like a dangerous place to take a short right now. Yeah, you want it, you want it. Well, there's a little gap here also. So you want it to fill this little gap. Right. Bounce, get its little relief. So more shorts can load and then come and take out these lows at 118. Got it. Cool. Short bias on Qualcomm. Next one, Costco, C-O-S-T. C -O -S -T. I believe it's Costco. Yeah, it's, that is. Ooh, this one, outside day today. Looking at quarterlies here. Yeah, I was trying to. Uh, Costco kind of looks good. Um, so you got a green month. You got a green week. They brought it back above the weekly open. You got a green day. Um, so if the market rallies tomorrow, Costco probably will also. I don't think it's going to get very far, though, with only one day left in the week. But if you're looking for a day trade, you could target this pivot high up at 536. Um, and then, yeah, I would be targeting if we get a two down, two up week, meaning you break above next week. If you break above this week's high, you're going to want to be long. And then you would target this high at 564, which would become that would put you at an outside month. So that would be the target in the like near term, like the next week or two. Okay. When you're thinking about taking a position, whether it's long or short, when price breaks, you're buying on these breaks, right? You're buying if price gains a previous high or loses a previous low. Are you, are you buying the second that happens? So what I like to do is... Like say next week, I'm looking to buy, to be a bull above 536. I would look for a daily strat setup that would potentially trigger me in before that happened. Okay. So something like this, hold on. Oh, I wish we had a magnet lock, a drawing lock. So say- Shout out, shout out Dan Eschman. Magnet drawing lock. He gets tired of hearing from me. <laughs> Add it to the list. <laughs> yeah. So say, um, say next week, for some reason, say this candle closed like this right now. Next week, Monday, you got a two up. Tuesday, you got a two down, which is basically like a little bull flag. Don't let Rob hear me say that. <laughs> so, then, so then on Wednesday, I would look to enter above Tuesday's high Got to it. trigger the weekly reversal. So so we we're 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 always using like multiple time frames, domino effect style trading. We want the smaller time frames to trigger the larger time frames. Because if you're just using a weekly candle, your stop's gonna have to be like way down here at five just say halfway through this previous week's candle. Um, as opposed to using a daily entry and stop, it's much tighter, but you're still trying to take advantage of the bigger move. Right. What happens if we just had a question here? What happens if you're looking for a setup and the target gets hit during pre market? Maybe price gains the previous day's high or loses the previous day's low or whatever. What, what if that happens in pre market? Are you? It means you missed the play. Okay. And yeah. You don't move on. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. 
don't yeah don't harp on it don't that that then becomes a gapper play so then you want to see what the time frame continuity on the daily is going to be and usually gap ups are for selling so usually when you were originally bullish before pre-market now it's gapped up. You want to be thinking in the minds of the people who were bullish, what are they going to do when the market opens? They're going to want to take profit. So then selling usually starts to happen. Right. So, yeah. It's Got just... it. Got it. All right. Soxel, S-O-X-L. Is 3X the Qs? Yeah, I was going to, I don't think it's the Qs. Oh, semiconductors. Yeah. Which they really shouldn't be charting Soxel. They should be, what should they be charting, SMH? Yeah. Let's chart that. Why shouldn't they be charting Soxel? Because Soxel's moving because of SMH. And the 3X leveraged have like time decay and stuff built into them. So they're just not as clear and precise. Right. Um, it's pretty much the same thing, but you do want to be charting like the mama bear you know, the mama right. ticker. Um, and this is kind of in the same position as the market. I'm going to be really curious to see what happens next week. Really am because We've got multiple weeks of two downs, which is like continuation down, down, down. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see if we're going to get two ups and if we're going to be able to stay above this week's high, that's going to be pretty telling. And SMH didn't bounce today because of anything chart related. It just probably bounced because the market bounced when it did, because this didn't it didn't do anything. It didn't take out any important pivot low. It didn't stop and reverse at a fair value gap, like none of those things. Um, this gapped way down because of that bad news and mm -hmm. Pelosi, she was buying NVIDIA or she sold it, I guess. Yeah, she sold it to look good and then come to find out it ends up tanking another 10% or something from the time she sold. So she didn't look all that good to anybody. <laughs> Not that she ever looked that good to anybody to begin with, but. Um, this is just in a, it's really in like a tightening range right now. You got a low, a hot, oh, I wish that wasn't black. We can change it. Absolutely. Um, so price is just kind of tightening up. Yeah. So it's not a great place to try and pick a bias right now. High, low, lower, high, high or low. It's just tightening. Yeah. You could even draw like a symmetrical um, triangle kind of a deal. Right. So maybe another one to be doing some spreads. Yeah. Playing Just both not, sides. Not very clear. Got it. And that's fine, but stay away from charts that aren't clear. Right. Right. Exactly. There's, there's so many fish in the sea. Why, why trouble yourself with something that doesn't make sense to you? Exactly. Right. Uh, meta. M-E-T-A. Double inside month. We're waiting for the break. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i posted about this one on twitter oh so i mean it's just stuck yeah um you definitely have a tightening range on this one and i'm not concerned with it until it gets out of this tightening range which yeah. is august is high and August is low. That's the range. 183 to 155. Until then, it's just going to continue to chop around in here, which is good if you're good at playing ranges and you know that, you know, hey, we're probably going to come and get near here. Mm -hmm. 
and today looks bullish on meta because the whole market bounced today so you're probably going to get continuation up tomorrow as well if you do i would target this pivot high at 170.92 got it cool let's keep on moving next one uh the cues same thing as the whole market yep bullish above bearish below because we're in the middle of the broadening formation and that's why you want to be paying attention to the market and trading in the direction of the market because most individual tickers are going to move in the direction of the market right all right no need to uh harp on that next one is gush gold I believe this is oil. Oh, why did I think that was gold? Isn't there a G? Like there's a GLD. Uh, and there I... is also there's also G O L D. I think Barrick is G O L D. I don't know what I was thinking of. Oh, that already went outside week. Um. All right. Why such a strong reaction about it going outside week? Because it's pretty much dead for this the rest of this week. Like I wouldn't want to touch it anymore. Hmm. Um. You're uh, okay. So I wish also I could move these after I draw them. Yeah. Hold on. We're gonna go get the other one. Um, you're stuck in the middle again, so not re like really clear either way. So you got a low, a high, a new low, and now you're stuck in the middle. Huh. You have not had any corrective activity for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the first week of any kind of weekly pullback. Um, For you, corrective activity just means making a new low. Making a pullback. So yeah, breaking a previous as candles low. Yeah. Um, I feel like if this was going to go hit all-time highs again, it would have done it last month but it didn't and it's back to its middle of its browning formation. This is, I mean, if you get a three and then next week you continue lower, you have all these pivots below that price is probably going to want to come and grab. So if you're short, that would be good. And then you can target those lows. Yeah. Um, that looks like the most likely scenario for next week is to continue lower. Interesting. 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 I like the look of this actually for a short. Um, yeah. Cool. UEC. I've Don't never heard of this sticker. Me neither. Uranium. I wish I could see the YouTube chat. I can't see it um what did i just read um miss izzy said that uranium can sometimes be inverse to the market and reacts to volatility i don't know what that means but that's what she's saying oh well, i know what it means but that's what she said i don't know how much truth there is to that but it could be um try it refreshing oh no did we lose you sarah come back Oh no, Sarah's, it seems Sarah's connection might be going bad. Oh no, we lost her. Apologies for the technical. I'm back. The technical issues. All right, you're back. We need your charts back. Oh, you do? Yeah. All right. I believe, I believe so. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Nice. Okay. What Juice the heck? back in. What the heck is UEC though? Uranium Energy Corp, of course. Oh, we, already, we already did uranium. Duh. 
It's the same person voting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it was the talk of the, it was talk of fin to it on Monday and Tuesday. It doesn't look like anything to me. I don't know. Um, I don't do this a lot, but hold on. Let's see if I can find the right tool. I'm looking for like a channel. Uh, where is it? I don't see it. There, there you go. That's close enough. Yeah. I mean, over the long term, you have higher lows and higher highs. So it's like bullish over the long term. Uh, what else? What else do we see? I just don't like these uranium charts. That's interesting. If, if it doesn't make sense to you, don't. There's no reason to be looking at it, right? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's keep on moving. C T I C. That sounds like a penny. C tick. C, not S. Oh, why did I hear S? Because I'm smart with a C. It is a penny, though. I was right. You can always tell the penny stocks. They always sound shady. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, okay. The first thing I see is a weekly broadening formation that's stuck in the middle. Um, hopefully, it stays an inside week this week. So next week, you can take it long. So... You want it to stay an inside week. And the next week, you would want to play it long on a break above 660. Got and it. then you're going to target that week's high. And then the main, main target would be a new all-time high for this name, which I, I'm assuming it's a new all-time high. No, it's not. You're not even close, huh? <laughs> not even close. A new near-term high. So above 780. Right. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad I corrected myself. <laughs> Tell people it's going to the moon. What? I don't do that. Well, you guys, it's a 10 minute warning. Well, technically, I guess 12 minute warning. If you want that 55% off deal, push the button. You got 12 minutes. Um, we're going to keep on moving here. Nugget, N U G T. Now we're that talking one, gold. That one's gold. Maybe yep. that's what I was thinking of. I, I, Think of G's and letters in weird places. It's, I don't, <laughs> like when I'm trying to guess an actor's name. Oh my gosh. What is going on with this thing? Holy cow. Wow. Oh, I know why. We're not going to chart Nugget. We're going to chart GLD because that's going to be, did it hit my target today? I didn't get an alert. So my target for GLD was to become an outside year at, hold on, 157.13, I think. Hold on, it should be this pivot low. Yep, 157.13. Oh, it almost did. They front ran it. Oh, those jerks. So they're going to come probably fill this gap, roll over, because that's what, it, that's that's what the level is to become an outside year because yeah. this year we took out 20, what is this year? 2022. We took out 2021's high, started failing, turned red on the year. So full time frame continuity to the downside all year. And then we're going to go take out 2021's lows. So this is almost at its um, kind of like downside exhaustion level. Right. So after it takes out, you don't want to be long this name for sure until after it takes out 157.13 and be watching gold, not gush. You want to watch gold. And then the following week, so not even the following week, it, we have to take out 157.13 first, then you want to get a reversal on the weekly, and then you can take a long, hoping that you just caught the bottom, mm -hmm. basically, because price is going to be exhausted. What's this? Uh, hold on. There's another little pivot over here. Huh? Interesting. 
So maybe you want to let it take out 157.03 also. Mm -hmm. Only 10 cents lower. And those are those relative equal lows that Jason and I keep talking about. Would you end up targeting, if you went long on, on them taking out those lows, would you target previous, uh, well, I guess not all-time high, but like relative high? Oh, you'd just I, be targeting that? I, yeah, I would target the most recent pivot high. Okay, got it. First, cool. Yeah. Keeping a close eye then on GLD here in the coming days and weeks. Next one's Baba. We haven't talked about any Chinese stocks yet. Nope. It's just kind of stuck right now. Um, so Baba did its job when it took out that one or oh no it's happening again i think we're maybe gonna lose sarah again many apologies folks we're gonna try and get this thing worked out as quickly as possible sarah have we lost you come back to us I think we've lost Sarah. Can we confirm? So what should we do if we lose Sarah? Should um, I could share my screen? No, nope, here, yeah, she's back. Sarah, you're back. All right, she's back. But we can't hear you. Your microphone's turned off. <laughs> this is Sarah's first time using a computer. <laughs> We're happy. <laughs> it's good that I was muted because I just cussed AT&T. <laughs> All right. What's up with Baba? What's going on? Oh, God. I don't know. Okay. Okay. What I was saying was <laughs> we're stuck in the middle of a broadening formation, like a lot of things. Like we've made lower lows. Um, we took out that pivot low. We reversed. It looks like we're stuck. Um, it's just really ugly right now. Yeah. Not clear. There's a lot of choppy, whippy action going on on the monthly. Would you oh. say that you held a higher low on the weekly, though? I mean, I mean it kind of looks like they did. Yeah. So the only saving grace for Baba would be to to hold this low here because you went down on the month, but it stayed green. So this would be a three, two down, two up reversal right so but the week is so red okay here's here's okay i do like this so next week we're gonna close this week as an inside week i can almost guarantee it like we'll say 90 percent. you're gonna close as an inside week so the following week if you can break above $100.91. You can enter long there, hoping that you trigger the monthly reversal, which is this level here at 104.85. You'll see it right here. It's the same level. And then you're going to target all these levels until you make a new high. Because on a 322, you took out the highs, took out the lows, started coming back through. The goal is to take out the highs again. Right. So this is kind of a nice setup. The problem is it's a China stock and we all know how crazy those can be. Right. Interesting. Okay. So a little bit more bullish leaning on Baba yes. for now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Square SQ. 
that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Um, What's that square? No, the way I was trying to move my line, it just didn't work out. Oh. Ugh. Um. I think Square has a yearly setup in force, if I can remember correctly, but we're just going to go with this for now. Line in the sand, 6640. Bullish above, bearish below. Yep. All right. Like the rest yeah. of tech, essentially. Good job, Jason. Hey, I've heard it 10 times tonight already. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just is where we're at. So, all yeah. right. Next one, Oxy. We're concerned about gush, right? Well, I mean, it's, I don't know if you're concerned about it, but. Well, we're, we're, we're. Expecting lower prices. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. So, all right. So Oxy. So the thing about names that are up at all time highs, they don't tend to stay there. So something that I, I'm always telling people is take profit. If you've been holding, always take profit when you make a new all-time high, because yeah. that's where smart money and people are taking profit because there's no more price action up here. So if you're long, you want to be long against bearish positions. You want to be in the winning position. So if there's no positions, you have nobody to be playing against. And you can see what's happened is it's becoming exhausted. So we hit a new all-time high. There's no more targets. Profit-taking is happening. And next week, if you break this week's low, we're probably going to go quite a bit lower just because, not because of like political and any of those things. It's literally just price action. How do you gauge how much lower to expect it to go. You just look at your targets and say, it's, this is the first one. It's going to at least go there. This is the next one. It might go there and you'll see what happens as it gets there. Yeah. So pretty much if, like if we close up here, your first target is very small, which I really wouldn't even consider that a target. I would consider right. that your first target. And then, you know, if you, if you are learning ICT concepts, which that's why I like them, is you can throw in some extra targets with fair value gaps. If your strat targets are really far away, you've got something in the in the middle, kind of like. Mm. So that's why I like that. Interesting. So we're expecting a little bit more downside here in Oxy then. Even yeah. though it made a new high, it did make new highs. It did. At least against those May 20, well, I don't know, June 2022 highs. Yeah, it did, but it, it failed them. Yeah, it didn't really gain them, did it? No. So that, you know, is like a liquidity sweep and the last people getting out of their longs and then profit taking. Let's talk real, real, real briefly about the difference between failed and gained. Why, what, what defines that it failed? Uh, basically unable to hold above it. So it didn't because it didn't close above that high. It did not technically gain it. Yeah, as long as it if it's staying above that high, then that's you're fine. You're safe. Price action's continuing to go up, but right. the moment that it comes back down, it's it's not holding. Right. And it makes sense that people are going to profit take at a new all time high, because why wouldn't they? Just like everybody who trades Bitcoin, they get so excited when it hits like 65,000, they're, they get greedy and there's, they say, no, we're going to go to a hundred thousand. No, you're not like <laughs> you hit a new all time high. That was, the, that was the goal. Like, yeah. don't get so greedy, take profit. You can always get back in lower. Yeah. Or you can get back in higher if it gains. Or you could do that. Yeah, it's possible. I don't recommend that because then you'd be buying <laughs> new all-time highs again, but I guess that's true. 
yeah <laughs> that's a good you point wanna, yeah you want to get in when there's price action above you still right well sarah we are at the end of the hour do you want to do one more yeah is it, well, is it your choice or a vote oh well, it's your oh no it's a vote okay yeah unh is the last ticker of the evening that's healthcare. This thing has been a monster. Did we hit new all time highs? Nope. Did what? It's real close. Mm -hmm. It's maybe like a penny off or something, or maybe they they like to the penny. Thirteen and twenty nine six sixteen cents. It missed it by sixteen cents. Mm -hmm. Um. It's gonna wanna, it's gonna wanna come and make new all-time highs. So same, same kind of story. If you can hold above August is low, it's okay to be bullish. Next week, if you can break above this week's high, you're gonna wanna target the a new all-time high. Got it. This one's kind of easy. Yeah, easy enough. Yeah. Right on, Sarah. Well, we very much appreciate your uh, your time. Uh, hanging out with us and sharing your strat wisdom. Um, where can the people find you? Uh, I am not. I'll tell you, I am not on You're Instagram. You're not on, on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I've been fighting this person. I'm not on Instagram. I am not on Telegram. I am at stat trading, which you can find us at stratalerts.com. Right. Um, and I'm on Twitter at trade sniper Sarah. And I'm on YouTube at Sarah Strat Sniper, and that's it. Awesome. Well, everybody that's tuned in, hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Please give Sarah a follow on all the social medias that she is on. Uh, and don't follow her on Instagram because it's not her. And yeah, thank you so much for being here, Sarah. We do really appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If you're interested in that 55% discount, this is your final chance Take advantage of it right now. Get that code from Sadie in the YouTube chat. Next week, we've got um, Twitter Spaces with Nick Stocks, Danny Naz, and more. That's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern time. They're, gonna, they're going to be giving us their picks of the week. I'm going to be live on Wednesday talking shop. I don't know what I'm going to be talking about, but 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, yeah, that's it for us. So again, Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. I hope you guys all have an awesome long weekend. Trade them well tomorrow, and we will see you again next week. Have a good night. Bye, guys. See you, Sarah.